Hi, my name is Guadalupe Fabian. Most people know me as Lupe. I was born in Rains in South California. While living there, my health problems began. I was a senior in high school when I had to get a physical exam. When I went to get my results, the doctor asked if I, I was aware that I had lupus. I wasn't and I didn't know what lupus was. I explained, sorry, she explained what it was a deadly disease and what symptoms to expect. My family and I were scared at first, but then stopped worrying because I didn't have any symptoms. I graduated from high school, continue on to college, obtain a full-time job. Life was great until August 2002. I started to gain weight, my joints hurt, and my psoriasis was getting worse. I had a sharp pain in the left side of, around my ribs. It bothered me when I would breathe and laugh. One night I was sick. My parents took me into the hospital. I was having a pain and trouble breathing. After two weeks in the hospital, Doctors told me I was having lupus flare. That was my health problems. I was, I was sent home with a lot of medication. However, the pain was still there. I went back to work. A couple months went by. I was at Halloween costume contest, and I dressed as a pumpkin. Everyone laughed because I looked funny. I myself couldn't stop laughing. The pain on the side moved and caused me to stop breathing. I ended up in the emergency room. After all the tests, they finally found the blood clot on my side. They, they injected with solomedril, which caused my rash and felt sick from my stomach. I asked the nurse if maybe I was allergic to solomedril. She asked the doctor, and he said it was impossible. Turns out I was allergic to solomedril. They kept me in the hospital to help me with the blood clot. The day I was going to be released, I got another blood clot on my leg. What a bummer. Finally, I was released from the hospital with more medication. I started retaining water in my body, in my eyes. I saw an eye specialist because it was hard for me to see. They found one of the medications named Plaquenil was causing my water retention. They stopped the medication. Months went by. I got married in July 2003. We came to Utah to visit my uncles in December 2003. I started feeling sick but figured it was a cold flu from the cold weather. So we went back home. I continued with the cold for two months. I also began digestion problems. It was Wednesday, February 25th, 2004, when I asked my cousin to drop me off at the hospital emergency room just to get checked. I got an ultrasound from my heart, and the guy asked if I knew I had a big heart. I was confused and thought it was referring to me being a caring person, but I was wrong. The nurse walked out of the room. The doctor walked in telling me that they had to remove the water around my heart as soon as possible. I started to worry because I was alone at the hospital. I asked if I could call my parents. The nurse handled the phone so I wouldn't move around. I called my parents. They told me not to worry. They would be there as soon as they could and gave me their blessing. I woke up from my surgery on the way to my room. I saw my parents. In order to, me, to be released, I had to use the restroom. I couldn't. I was transferred to another hospital. When I arrived, they did more tests and started me on a chemotherapy called cytoxin. Those few months were rough. After the chemo, I began to feel much better, but I didn't. It didn't end there. After a few months, I became pregnant. A few months into my pregnancy, doctors told me I had to terminate my pregnancy. It was causing my kidneys to shut down. I didn't. I did it with all the heart, the pain in my heart. The doctors advised me never to get pregnant again. I retained so much water, and I had to be in the wheelchair for nearly a year. After all, I started looking for help. I began acupuncture. My psoriasis started to clear up. My swollen got better, and I felt much better. I was stable. In June 2008, we moved to Utah. Around 2009, I had an ulcer that burst in my stomach. I made it, I made, sorry, it made me bleed so much that I had to obtain a blood transfusion. A doctor found that I didn't have to take Coumadin anymore. I continued to do well until I became pregnant again in 2012. I began, I had a great pregnancy 
the only problem I had was high blood pressure. Not only I was 32 weeks, I started having some bleeding. They kept me in the hospital because of the creatinine was going up. They had to induce my pregnancy to see if, the, if it would come back down. It didn't. Two weeks after I had the baby, I had to start dialysis. I didn't know what to do with myself. Having a newborn baby, having to do dialysis, I thought I wouldn't be able to do this. I cried many times, asking God to help me. And gave me the strength to go on with this new life. Sorry. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I started with hemodialysis for three months and then transferred to PD dialysis. It was the best. The nurses were so nice to me that I felt special. I was able to spend more time with my family and return to work. I had my test done at the University of Utah and was also listed there. And then my employer decides to switch insurance. I had to start all over with the process here at the IMC hospital. It was a pain, but it was so worth it. The nurses here were nicer. They were available anytime I needed them. I would never forget them, and I received a lot of calls from transplant, but they just weren't for me. Finally, I received a call last year letting me know that I had a live donor, and it was for me. They ran several tests and made sure things were good. The transplant was scheduled for June, but due to my high white blood cells, it was moved to July. Finally, on Tuesday, July 25th, 2017, I received my transplant. I was in the hospital for four days. I went home that finally, that Friday. However, I ret returned that same night due to a bad infection. I was admitted for a couple of weeks until they found the problem. I had to return every other day for IV infect antibiotics. Three months after the transplant, Sorry, three months after the transplant, I returned to work, and here I am now telling you my story. I want to thank everyone that makes this process so much easier, and a special thanks to all those donors. I encourage you to stay positive and never lose hope. Thank you all.